I remember playing Monopoly with kids and everybody just looking at me saying, well, you're going to win, you're Jewish. You know, just dumb stuff like that, but that does define you when you're younger. Hi, my name is Mark Cuban, and I just want to say happy Hanukkah to everybody. What's up, Ted? Uh, Mark, how are you? Thanks. I'm good. Hey, it's great to see you. Thanks, Thanks for, for doing this. Me. Thanks for having me to do it. I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I was born in Squirrel Hill. When I was about five, my family moved to the South Hills. When I went to elementary school, um, it was me and Michael Levitt, and we were the only Jewish kids. Whenever there was a Jewish holiday, it was one of the two of us, me or Michael, that had to stand up and explain it. When I was in sixth grade, some kid just walked up to me and started fighting just started punching me. He was like, kike this, kike that. I had no idea what a kike was. And I had to go to my dad and he explained it to me. That was my first real taste of true anti-Semitism. When, when people feel marginalized, the hard part for them is just feeling seen and heard. I grew up in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Yep. Also one of two Jews in my school. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. There's a lot of pressure on your shoulders because you're the guy <laughs> that they come to, right? Now, social media has spread this, uh, this really vile hatred far and wide. Do you have thoughts on what you can do, what social media can do to help combat this? Yeah, it's a slippery slope on social media because there's anonymity. The people who are the most vile are rarely the people that show their literal faces, right? We need to find ways to, to push back and give them the tools that, that, that they need. Do you have any innovative things that you've seen, any ideas that have come your way that can help do this, that can help yes. reverse the algorithm, that can help push back. I'm glad you, so two, two, two different things there. Yeah. Now there's this thing called ChatGPT, and it's part of OpenAI, and it is another world changer, where effectively you can go in there and type in, what is anti-Semitism? And because it's ingested, pretty much everything that it's been able to ingest mm -hmm. and applied within reinforcement learning, all this AI stuff, the responses it gives are insanely accurate. but it has to keep on learning. And how we teach it is going to be hugely impactful. And so we have to make a proactive effort to commit information to those models so that two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years from now, when they're even smarter, yeah. when people say, you know, what is a Jew? What is Judaism? What is the history of the Jews? You don't want it influenced by something that takes it in the wrong direction. If you're Jewish, we, we need people to be proud Jews, like Mark Cuban. If you're not, then we need allies at this moment, right. just like we always try to be good allies to other of communities course. when they're facing challenges of their own. If we have the opportunity to actually uh, be in at the beginning and make sure that the next phase of technology is going to be a positive one, I think that's a message that, that people would would like to hear, and it's something that people will want to support. If you don't try to understand where it comes from, you can't work on it, you can't help, you can't fix. Kyrie, I think, learned a lot. There's a difference between hate, somebody that has blinders on is gonna hate Jews no matter what. I don't care what you tell me, I'm not listening. And so with Kyrie, I think he learned, and I think that's a positive. But at the same time, um, it's gonna happen again, and again, and again, that's the nature of hate and anti-Semitism. We've been focusing on the, the challenge, but there are opportunities too. The most important part, I think, of, of this moment is that we're having this conversation and that more people are having this conversation and that they recognize the need to stand up. I think you have to tell people, right, these are lies. Yes. And you're trafficking in lies that are dangerous. They're dangerous to the Jewish community. 40% of American Jews have changed their behavior to be less identifiably Jewish online or in yeah, public. Yeah, of course. One of the best ways to respond is to be a proud Jew. Yeah, I mean, I helped fund um, the Tree of Life documentary. Yeah. And I know people who are members of that shul and I, you know, who had friends and family that were lost. And I wanted to be there to help them produce this because people had to see it. This is real, people die because of anti-Semitism. We've got to be proactive, right? We've got to overwhelm the hate with education and love and connections. You hate to say this, and it sounds kind of counterintuitive, but probably the greatest antithesis to hate, and in, in particular anti-Semitism, is reverse engineering algorithms these days. Hanukkah is so important, so let me ask you about Hanukkah before we finish. <laughs> so we're coming up to Hanukkah. This may be airing during Hanukkah, I don't know. The way I grew up, I mean, we barely got presents for, for birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> when everybody else was looking at Christmas and everything, and it w was our opportunity to just be together and just appreciate what we have.